Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? I'm outside on our patio. So it's probably very, very loud. I hope that you guys can hear me. Um, Alex is inside taking a shower and then he's going to um, order us some food from room service. Oh, I guess he's, oh, there he is. He's out of the shower. <laughs> And we are back early from Ultra Music Festival. It is currently 9.40 p.m. Ultra Music F Festival got canceled this evening. So, which is probably good because I can vlog then. And, um, well, it didn't get canceled. So, it got shut down because um, there was lightning and it was raining and stuff like that. You take this tag off me. Um, it was lightning and thunder, thundering and stuff like that. So, it, it like shut down. We actually, we went over there about, I think it was like 5.45, 6 o'clock or something like that. It had rained the majority of the day, like downpour rain. And um, I went in to take a shower and I came out and I was like, oh, I don't know what's, and I looked out and it was like clearing up, like it wasn't bad and stuff. And so when we walked over there, I mean, it was cloudy. It wasn't like beautiful or anything like that, but, um, yeah, it wasn't like raining or anything. We like made it over there, um, made it into the uh, like VIP area. Like we always get VIP tickets because they have nicer bathrooms and <laughs> because I have to have a place to sit down, which tonight there was no place to sit down because it was pouring rain. And so we, um, we made it over there. We made it inside and we were listening to this DJ and in like the VIP section, like the, for, the, for the main stage, if you're like three stories up, and then there's like two tiers down where they have like tables and couches for like clubs and like celebrities and stuff like that. Um, and so you're above that and then they go down there, right? But none of, nobody was there because it was like supposed to be raining. And then you can go in through another entrance and then there's this area that's probably like, oh, I don't know, like a thousand feet and then long. It runs like the entire front of the VIP section all the way to the front of the stage. And then there's like 10 feet, like it's like 10 feet wide in between there. And so we usually go down there and dance and stuff. And so I said to Alex, I said, Tiesto was going on. And I said, do you wanna go down there and see if anybody's down there? Cause it was like, it was rainy, but it was like real light drizzle. And I was like, do you wanna go down there? And he was like, do you mind being in the rain? And I was like, no, I don't care at all. He had bought, bought he went to CBS this morning and bought us these plastic ponchos. Cause they said you couldn't take umbrellas into Ultra a plane going overhead wherever I'm at there's always a plane going overhead um, but when I saw people in there with umbrellas not a lot but I everybody had so they told you like ahead of time they said if it's gonna rain like bring ponchos and things like that so Alex went and got four ponchos at CBS he's like plastic ponchos thank God he did and so we went down there and um, we were dancing to Tiesto and stuff and Tiesto was fantastic it was so funny because they like asked, they were like, how many people have been coming here? Like, you know, for, this is like your second year. And a lot of people applauded and they're like, third year, and more people and fifth year. And then they said like, how many people have been here? Like, this is your first year and tons of people. Like, you know, we're like, ah, it was really exciting. And, and Alex and I had been talking about on the way over there, um, other than the year that we didn't go because it was after the accident, and the year that they didn't have it because of the lockdown, we have been coming for 10 years. Our first year, I think, we, he thinks it was 2014. I feel like it was before that, that we came to Ultra for the first year. So we've been coming for like eight or 10 years. And it's like crazy to think that. But anyway, so we were dancing to Tiesto. It was about 20 minutes into a set and it just started pouring down rain. So Alex and I looked at each other and we like threw in our pot. He's like, do you want to go up? And I was like, no, cause you're like, if you're up under the VIP section where it's covered, you're like 20 people back. You can't see anything. You're up on like this big platform. It's like bleachers, but it's like nice, you know? And so um, I was like, no, let's just stay down here and dance. And so we danced in like the pouring rain for like an hour. It, it was actually really, really fun. The thing was that my phone was in my back pocket, which kept on like flying up. So my phone at some point, cause I tried to record a lot of it. Cause people were like, put footage up of Ultra so we can see what it's like. So I was trying to like record some of it. And um, my phone got wet, which I thought iPhones were supposed to be able to be get, to get wet. And so it was like, I was trying to get into my phone and like it wouldn't let me into my phone. And so finally I just put my phone in like my, I kept like uh, wear a fanny pack where I'm there to like keep all my stuff. 
And so I put it in my fanny pack and then I put my t-shirt over my fanny pack and then I had the poncho on. It's like a really like, it was a cheap poncho. <laughs> it was like this like, it was like, I mean, plastic that you would cover like a, you know, a, a casserole or something like that. But thank God that he got them because we would have got it like drenched. And I took my hat off because I wore my corduroy icon hat. And the thing about it is, is that I mean, most people would be like, just keep your hat on, it's raining. But that corduroy is so thick that if it gets wet, I didn't know if it would dry again while we were down here. So I took it off and I put it in my, um, in my pocket. It's so interesting because every year that we go, like, you know, if you, like my friend Nikki was like, let me know, send me pictures of what Alex is wearing because Alex always like specifically picks out his outfits, you know, long in advance and stuff like that. And, um, so she was like, send me pictures. So I was like, I sent her a picture of what he had on. I was like, you're the first one to see the picture of Alex and his outfit. She was so excited. But anyway, um, isn't it fun to get excited for other people, you know? Uh, my friend Tanya Jean, her, like, one of her best friends from when she was growing up is coming to visit her this week. And I was talking to her today, and I was like, what are you guys going to do? And she's like, we're going to go out to dinner here. And I was like, what are you going to do the first night? And she's like, well, we'll probably just go up into the guest bedroom and just, like, talk for hours and stuff. I was so excited. I'm so excited for her that she's got her coming. So, um, but anyway, today, I knew, like, I wanted to wear my new, like, sober t-shirts to Ultra. I actually have this Boys Don't Cry, the Cure t-shirt that I was going to wear one day. Um... But I was like, every year I always like worry about what I'm gonna wear and then I'm like, this is so stupid, just wear something comfortable. So today I brought these blue shorts I like almost never wear and I wore these blue shorts with this like sober t-shirt of like sober people representing that. We do go to festivals and concerts too and have a good time. We are not a glum lot. And um, a couple people like looked at my t-shirt and went like that and stuff like that, it was real sweet. So, um, but yeah, we like talked to a couple of people there. And Tani was asking me to talk to Tani on the phone. And she's like, are there like people there your age? And I was like, there's a lot of people there like my age and like 20 years older. There's like, you see like 70 year olds there um, because it's been going on. This is the 24th year. And so, so many people have been going for like 24 years since it was on the beach in Miami. So many people still go, you know? And so anyway, um, but yeah, it was just a blast. We had such a good time. Even the dancing in the rain was probably I know it sounds crazy, but it was probably the highlight, you know, of the whole night and um, being right down there in the mix of it. It sounded like, you know, he's, he's FaceTiming somebody. I don't know. He's, I think he's FaceTiming his mom. But um, so anyway, so when it started like getting really, really hard, a lot of people were like, like raining hard. A lot of people were leaving and going up stairs under the VIP section. So Alex was like, do you want to go up there? And I was like, I don't really care. He was like, well, let's go up there. It's like raining too hard. So we went upstairs. Well, we were like way, way in the back. And so we were standing there and uh, that's where they have the bar. They usually have a bar downstairs too. And I said, do you want something to drink? And he was like, yeah, he was like, let's go get something to drink. So I got the green Red Bull. I don't know which one it is. I couldn't see. I, I brought reading glasses with me. I brought these. I told Alex, I was like, I always bring like a scratch pair of reading glasses. Like if I'm just going out and running errands or whatever to have in my pocket and I didn't. I brought my, I brought these and I brought my new pair of clear, these are the blue ones. I don't know if you can see, but anyway, and I brought my clear ones that are new. So I was like, which one do I put in the fanny pack to like whip out, you know, at the concert, or the, the show or the festival, cause I couldn't see. You guys, the traffic down here, I don't know if you can see it, but it is like so bad. We're like right by the bridge that goes over the, the water and I didn't realize it. And um, when I was standing here talking to Tanya, I heard like all these people, I didn't even realize there was people walking by here and like below our hotel and there was all these people and they all like started like, like going boo and it was like <laughs> the bridge going up and all these people started honking and stuff cause you couldn't get over the bridge. And then as soon as the bridge started going down, um, all these people were like cheering and then they started doing that. When you leave festivals a lot, they do that Seven Army Nation song. I don't know why that song, but it's that dun, 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 dun. So literally through the streets of Miami, when we were walking back in the rain, you could hear everybody going dun, 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 dun. They'd like chant that. So anyway, um, so we went over to this place called the Mega Stretch Structure. Um, it's, it's called the Resistance Area. Carl Cox, he's this huge DJ. He's like, I think he's older than me. He's been around forever. I should look up and see. I don't know how old he is, but I love Carl Cox. But this is his first year he hasn't been there. He's coming back next year with the 25th year, but he, this is the first year he hasn't been there in forever. And so Ad Alex likes his DJ named Adam Bayer. I don't really know him that well. So we got all the way over there. We had to wait in line because it's smaller. So we got in there 
and um, we were like standing in one place where it was like this one drop of water coming in, but it was covered. And so Alex, we were there for like, I don't know, like half an hour or so, and Alex goes, do you want to go back to the main stage? Because Hardwell is going on. And I said, I, to be honest with you, I don't really care. I've seen Hardwell enough. I don't really care. We can stay here. I'd rather stay here than walk back through it. Because it's like, it's like a 10 minute walk from that stage to the other stage. There's like six, sta six stages going on at the same time. And I was like, we can just stay here till the end. At that point, it was nine, and it closes at midnight. You guys hear the bridge down there? There's still people walking. Oh yeah, there's tons of people walking. And so I was like, we can just stay here till the end, you know? And so, like right after that, the DJ stopped, and it was this Adam Bayer that Alex wanted to see. They, he stopped, and they put up this huge thing over the screen, and they said, they actually just put it out on their Instagram, that due to the weather, that they had to close, um, it wasn't ultra, it was like Bayfront that was closing them down. And I guess it, because when we walked out, it was still raining, but it wasn't raining as bad as it was when we were like dancing at Tiesto. I guess it wasn't because of the rain, I guess it was because of the lightning. There was lightning and thunder, and so they had to stop because of that. And so everybody just kind of stood there. They were like, you have to clear out now. Like, you have to leave, and we're going to try to start up as soon as possible. And I looked at Alex, and I go, I'm going back. And he goes, do you want to wait? And see, I go, they're clearing, they're making everybody leave. And he goes, I know, but you think that they're going to open back up again? I go, do you think they're going to open back up again? I go, that's a pretty big decision that they have to make to like close it down, you know? I mean, I can still feel kind of a little bit of, of like rain coming on me right now, but this is completely covered. I was surprised. I thought this patio would be French when we came back. And we got back and it was like really covered um, or completely dry and it's all covered. So, um, so anyway, I said, he goes, yeah, that's a pretty, I mean, I said, that's not like a light decision to close down. They said 60,000 people were there today or more, 60 to 80,000. I was like, that's not like a small decision. They're not going to back, open back up in three hours. And if they do, I mean, we're five minutes away if you want to walk back over. And he's like, well, if we go back, I'm back for the night. I go, yeah, me too. <laughs> I, mean, I had already thought that, right? And so he was like, well, should we just wait? He, I go, nobody, he goes, nobody's going anywhere because nobody was leaving. They were all just kind of standing there. And I go, they're not going to reopen. And if they do, it's going to be like an hour. I said, I think we need to leave. Because like now it's like, nice out like you know it, it's not nice it's cloudy but I don't see lightning or anything and I said I'm going back and I said I'm going back now I said because we're like you know like five minute walk from there which is we used to back in the day we used to stay in South Beach and then we'd have to get an uber or a taxi back to South Beach which you have to wait forever to get that and we're now like a five minute walk from there and so I said um, I think we need to leave now and meet the crowd well we did and I mean we were smart because a lot of people were waiting to see what was going to happen. I don't know. They might have opened it up again, but look, there were so many people that walked out behind us. I can't imagine. They probably lost half the crowd. By the way, there was no DJs that I wanted to see left tonight. All the DJs that I want to see are Saturday and Sunday. So I was like, it's whatever. Now tomorrow, it's supposed to rain during the day, but it's supposed to be clear tomorrow night. And Sunday, it's supposed to be sunny and partly cloudy all day long. So it shouldn't be bad tomorrow night or Saturday, Sunday night. But anyway, so we walked back. We were back here in like five minutes. So nice staying very close to the venue. I don't know why we didn't do that. Like we did that two years ago. Melissa and Jason are not with us this time. They decided not to come because they have like a big thing they're going to in a while. Um, so they didn't come with us this year, but we were the ones that like the four of us decided that we were gonna stay downtown the last time that we came because the year before that we came, the la or not the year before because there was a year in between, but the time before that we came, we all stayed in South Beach. And it's just, it's such a long, long like ride. I mean, it's like a, back after the festival it's like an hour hour and a half to get back to south beach it's like a lot so this is smart staying right downtown and there's so many hotels right downtown miami that are like walking distance there's literally like the we don't see it the omni but the omni is like like it looks over the bayfront um so anyway so we walked back and then he was like talking to somebody like i was talking to his mom i think <laughs> he just looked over here at me like what um so yeah, and uh, but it's been such a good trip so far. Just getting away has just done miracles for me. I feel, you know, the last vlog that I did, so I didn't vlog last night, and I'll tell you why in a second, but like the last vlog that I did, I felt so great after I got done vlogging that day, and that was also the day that on my drama channel I made a video reading comments, and I addressed a lot of the online stuff, and it was like after I got done talking about it, it's like when I go to a meeting and I really share what's on my heart. Like I leave the meeting and I feel so much lighter. Like I said in that video, I kind of joked and said it's kind of like confession, but it really is. You know, it's like, and I felt so much lighter, you know? And I never like announce 
until the day that we get someplace and I'm leaving on vacation because I like it to be a surprise so I think it's kind of fun which I'm sure like you guys knew like a lot of people knew Ultra was this weekend so I'm sure you guys figured it out we were probably headed down here but that day what was that Wednesday I had gotten up <laughs> so I said I didn't really do a lot that day because I didn't want anybody to like know because I wanted it to be like this big surprise right but that day I had gotten up and early and filmed like three videos and Car got ready Caroline picked me up we ran around, got home later than we thought we were, then I came back, and then I filmed three more videos, pre-filmed them for all my channels to post on Thursday, and then I filmed a drama video, I filmed The Valley for my Peter Dust stuff, or my, my TV channel. Somebody asked on there, they said, what's Peter's reality TV channel? It's called Peter's Reality TV Recaps and Opinions, and it's listed below. <laughs> but thank you for, it's listed below on all of my channels, I think, except for my Peter Dust channel. I mean, this. Every time I hear people scream, I'm like, do they, oh, oh no, they're screaming because the bridge. Um, I'm like, do they open it back up again? Are people going back there? Oh, it's starting to rain again. So no, they're probably keeping it closed. And do you hear all these people here? I love this. It makes me so happy. But anyway, um, so, I, and then I filmed all those videos, or I filmed for that day, I filmed a drama video, which was real short. It was like 10 or 11 minutes. And I didn't expect to do that. And then I filmed, that uh, reality TV video about the valley because I wanted to film that video that day and then I filmed the vlog. Got packed, got everything. I was done probably by 10 o'clock that night. Alex went to sleep early and I was like, I can never sleep the night before a vacation. I'm always so excited. It's like a kid at Christmas, you know? And I had all my stuff ready to batch from, you know, Alex's car and stuff to go to the airport. I was so ready and so excited. And um, talking to people on the phone, like, calling people and checking in, called my sponsor, called Tanya, called a couple friends and stuff like that. And I was so excited. And we had to leave our house at 3.30. And so I got up, I lay down from two to three, and like, I think at like 2.45 I fell asleep. <laughs> got up at three, took a shower, got ready. Our flight down here was fantastic. The airport was smooth sailing. Were, I thought, cause of like college spring break or high school spring break or school sc whatever spring break i thought it would be busy but it really wasn't and we like got right in got through got boarded everything was fine got down here i thought the miami uh airport like when you fly in you have to walk so far to get from like where you land to like the baggage claim and so i thought it's gonna be an hour or two and i thought it's gonna be crazy everybody's you know coming through most of the people that were on our flight to Miami from Indianapolis were like uh, exchange or what's it called? I don't know. Changing planes in Miami, and they were going to like we talked to uh, somebody that Alex works with was going. He was there with his family, and they were going to Anguilla. And then we were talking to other people that were going to other places in the Caribbean, and they were oh some people were going to Zurich. I don't know why they were flying through uh, Miami to go to Zurich, but they were anyway. So most people weren't like stay, you know staying in Miami, and so we got there and like we walked right to baggage claim. Our bags were like coming right off the thing. There was like this guy behind this thing that was like pulling the bags off and he like, he, like Alex pointed out our bags and he gave them to us. We were in an Uber and we were at the hotel by, I mean, nine o'clock in the morning. I couldn't believe, no, maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. I couldn't believe it. And um, so our room wasn't ready. So we went to the pool yesterday and it was nice yesterday during like when we got to the pool, which was early. It was like 10.30 that we were at the pool. People were so nice. They're like, as soon as your room's ready, we'll like text you. And we'll, you know, it should be ready. Because check-in was like at, like I was checking at most hotels, four, it was like four, three or four or something like that. And I was like, is it, cause I think the last time we came with Melissa and Jason, their room got ready first and we waited in their room until our room was ready. I, I remember falling asleep on their, the end of their bed. So anyway, I was like, um, I thought we'd be like laying out by the pool forever, getting lunch down there and stuff like that. Well. We were the only ones at the pool. It was really windy yesterday. I don't think a lot of people had checked in for the festival yet and stuff. There was nobody at the pool. Not one for, I mean, it was 10.30 too, and it was like 78 degrees. It wasn't that cold. And I got in the pool, and the pool, I was the only one in the pool. Alex was the only one sitting out. I mean, it was just, a, there was two people, two different groups of two people that were like asleep in these like cabana kind of things. They were just like sleeping there with all their stuff. And um, the pool was really nice. I got in the pool, and. We were there for like, I went downstairs, got a cup of coffee, and came back up. 
I was getting ready to read my book, and as soon as I sat down to read my book with my cup of coffee, I got a text that our room was ready. So we were in our room by like, oh, we were in our room by like 11.45 yesterday. No, probably 11, 11.15, 11.30, we were in our room. I couldn't believe it was, they, our room was ready so early. Our room is so nice. Our room is so nice. For like 20 or $30 extra night, we got a junior suite, and I was like, um, okay, that's money well spent. It was money totally well spent, <laughs> let me just tell you, okay? Uh, you know, when I think about the money that I've blown at restaurants or the casino, I was like, this was, to I mean, it's like literally twice as big as most hotel rooms we stay in, it's gorgeous. And so, we got up here, and we love this restaurant in Miami called Doji's, it's a Venezuelan restaurant, and so Alex goes, he was really tired too, and I said, do you wanna like, do you go, I could've like, well, I would, I was kind of thinking, like, let's go to lunch and then come back. We weren't sure if we were going to go out to dinner somewhere last night or not. And I said, we can do whatever you want to do. And he was like, so you want me to just pick a restaurant? I said, just pick a restaurant for dinner tonight and make reservations. And he was like, do you want to go to Doji's for, because this is something we've done for years and years and years, just go to Doji's when we first get in. We used to take our luggage there because we knew we couldn't check in. And it's just like this really small place, like, up by Brickle. It's real cute. And um, Alex love it, loves it because they have, like, I mean, it's authentic Venezuelan food. They have like chapas, or right bus, and stuff like that. But they have like big ones, and he loves it there. So, um, and they have yuca fries there, which I love the yuca fries with cheese. And so, um, and was it's called like wasacaca, I think. It's like it's like I try to explain it to people. And it's like guacamole, but it's like spicy. But it's, so it's like it looks like guacamole, but it's creamy. It's delicious. So or it's not. It's yeah. So anyway, I'm like, is it spicy? Well, kind of a little bit, but not really. But anyway. You can dip, you can dip like uh, yuca in it, which is like uh, potatoes kind of. Oh, there's lightning! Oh lord, that was big lightning. Um. So anyway, I was looking to see if Alex saw it, and he's like FaceTiming. So I mean, he didn't see. I don't think he saw it. It was like way over the sky. Yeah, I don't think Ultra's going back on time. So anyway, oh, there's thunder. So I said, well, what time do you want to get up to go to Doji's? And he was like. Let's lay down, and he said like one o'clock, and I go one fifteen. Cause at that point it was like a, it was like eleven forty-five. I was like an hour and a half nap, and I'll be fine, right? So my, I set my alarm for one fifteen. He set his alarm for one fifteen. I woke up. I looked over. He like reached for his phone to turn off his alarm, and he turned it off off. And I was like, oh, I guess we're going back to bed. I said, do you want to go back to bed? He's like, I'm too tired to go to lunch. So we went back. We laid back down. I woke up at four thirty yesterday. We like napped, and it was so fantastic. And then we got up, Alex was watching Spider, some Spider-Man, new Spider-Man on TV, and we have this TV that like rotates in our room. You can like have to like watch it like in the living room area, you can like move it around, it's so nice. And so we were like laying in bed and he was watching this and, um, and he was like, what do you want to do? And I said, I think I'm gonna watch a show, because I was trying to, oh, I had watched, on the plane, I watched, because I downloaded Survivor and Amazing Race, so I caught up on those. So I was trying to finish the double you know, and so I came out here because he was like watching that movie in there. I came out here and watched the double you know to watch the double you know. And I was like 15 minutes into it. I was like so tired. I was like, I'm going back inside. And oh, more lightning. He was like, do you want to go to dinner tonight? He was like, or do you want to just get room service? I was like, babe, it's totally up to you. I don't really care. We can do whatever you want to do. Oh, it's raining a little bit on me. And he was like, let's just get room service. And I said, okay. I said, I'm gonna, like, I don't want to eat right now, so I'm not super hungry. I got a bunch of snacks. I ate all these snacks on the plane. And so, I got these new, you know those cheese crackers, but they have the ruffled ones now? They're like this big. And I got Cheddar Ranch. Oh my God, they were so good. But anyway, so we both went back to sleep, and we woke up at like 8 o'clock, and we got dinner. And I got like a veggie burger, he got a cheese pizza, and we got truffle fries. I got truffle fries, he got fries. It was so good, I had Diet Coke. And then afterwards, I was like, I gotta decide now whether I'm on a vlog or not. And I was like, so just like relaxed and whatever. It was so, to be honest, like it sounds cheesy, but it was so nice just hanging out the entire day in the hotel room. Like we really got our money's worth of hanging out in the hotel room yesterday, and it was so nice. And so, you know, like when people like go on vacation, they go, I don't really care about the hotel room because we're never in it anyway. We were in our hotel room. I didn't, we, we got in here yesterday at like what, 11, 11, 11, 11 15. He always unpacks, so he unpacked everything. 11, 11, 15. 
And I didn't leave the hotel room again today until 3. <laughs> so I, I'm somebody that spends some time in a hotel room. I, like, I love a good, nice hotel room. The bed is so comfortable and stuff like that. <clears throat> well, that was like two nights. That was like a night I hadn't taken my sleep medication. So last night, um, oh, and then there was like this big bathtub and stuff. So I was like, I'm either going to take a shower or a bathtub and then put on my pajamas. He was asleep. So I went and I took a bath, put on my pajamas, did my face routine and everything like that. Brought my face routine down here. Um, and did my face routine, got all lotioned up. He was asleep. I had another Diet Coke left, plus I got a piece of uh, key lime pie. I'm like, when in Florida, you have to get key lime pie, right? So I waited because I was still kind of full. So I came out here and I watched the last two episodes of The Devil You Know. It was good. It kind of inspired this video that I'm going to do about on my drama channel about people that believe that reptilian aliens are taking over the U.S. There's like been an increase in people that believe this. It is like pouring down rain. I can hear it down there. Oh my god, there was so much traffic. We got out. We got out right at the right time. So, um... Did our food come? Oh, our food is here. Our food is here. Well, oh wait a second. I'll go inside. So, um, so yeah. So I watched that, and then I was like, I don't know what I want to watch. And I was like, wanting to get into something. I really want to watch Apples May Fall on down here. And I was like, maybe I should just listen to my audiobook. And I was like, no, like watch something else. So Alex had watched Fellow Travelers, which is like a gay show. I guess it has. The main star is the guy that was in American War Story. I can't remember what his name is. He's been in a bunch of stuff. I can't remember his name, but anyway, he's super famous. So I started watching Fellow Travelers. It's like eight episodes. You can watch it. Oh, somebody said on my video, they said, The Devil You Know The Devil You Know is on Hulu. It is on Hulu. I don't have, or we don't have premium Hulu. So <laughs> we don't get it with our, because we don't, I, I, I don't know how much premium Hulu costs a month, but we should probably get it. So anyway. So I, that's why I watched it and I had to buy the second season of it on, um, on the Prime. But anyway, so I started watching that Fellow Traveler show. I got through like that, I got like halfway through the first episode. The first episode takes place in like 1952 with these two guys meeting. Well, it kind of goes back in time. The guy is dying of, a of AIDS and so it's like his former boyfriend who now is like married and has kids. It like goes back. And, and I think that takes place in 86, and then it goes back to 52, like when they first met. I'm like, I am not into this tonight. Like, this is really sad and kind of depressing. I just real sad, and I was like, I want to watch something else. Hey, why not 28 Days? Because I had downloaded 28 Days because I wanted to watch a bunch of recovery movies. Remember when I said that over here? So I was like, I'm going to watch 28 Days. So I started watching 28 Days. I was like, at that point, I was like, I was going to watch like 15 minutes of it because it was like midnight or something like that. I was like, I'm just going to watch like 15 minutes of it, then I'm going to go to bed and get a good night's sleep. So I thought it was going to be nice today. I thought, well, they say rain, but maybe it'll be nice and we can go to the pool all day. There was supposed to be like a pool party and stuff like that that we were going to go to. That had like a DJ and stuff that Alex wanted to go to this pool party. So I was like, well, we can go do that tomorrow if it's nice. So maybe I need to get just a good night's sleep. So um, I started watching 28 Days and I ended up watching the whole thing. I forgot how good of a movie it is. It, you know... I, I, while I was watching it, I like scripted, well not scripted, but outlined this video that I want to make about being sober. I really forget sometimes what a struggle it was to stay sober, not just that, but like assimilate to the real world that doesn't live sober all the time, you know, and I'm not talking about just people drinking or smoking weed or using or whatever. I'm talking about just the mindset. There's more light in Just the mindset, you know, of being a sober person in a world that I don't think really that way today, honestly, you know? Like, I wanna wear the t-shirt and stuff because I wanna represent and, you know, I think it's important, you know, that I think music festivals and concerts are known for like a lot of drinking and drugs and stuff. And I want people to know that we're not a glum lie. You can get sober and still have a lot of fun, you know? And so, um, and this is like the first year that like I've, I've got these shirts, I wanna get some more. Like I'm really proud to wear these shirts as a sober person. And so I was like watching this last night and I, 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 I mean I talk about it on here but I like forget really like how deeply 
had built relationships with people that I didn't even know in treatment, you know, and what it was like after I got out of treatment, like that was really hard too. And setting boundaries with friends and past romantic partners. The camera stopped. I didn't realize I was at 30 minutes. You know, and just this idea of, um, Wanting something different. You know, it's the same thing if you watch 28 Days as it is like Girl Interrupted, which is not about addiction, but it's about mental health. And there's a turning point for Winona Ryder in that movie. Just like there's a turning point for Sandra Bullock in 28 Days when it's kind of like, and for Sandra Bullock in 28 Days, it's when she like goes out the window from these pills that she's thrown out the window and she like falls from the limitless tree. And that like, that's the moment where she's like, like, I don't think I was ever in denial. Like, I always knew it was a really bad problem. But I maybe, I kind of forget what those early days were like. How many times I convinced myself before I went into treatment that last time that I could stop on my own. Um, and I would get up and I'd be like, okay, today I'm, I'm not gonna use anymore. Or maybe just for two days. It was interesting because, you know, and then an hour later, I'm drinking because the shakes are so bad and, you know, whatever. I'm like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And then tonight, I'm going to do everything I possibly can. And that was really how I thought for a really long time, you know. I was watching that Double You Know, and they have video footage of the woman, this Barbara Rogers, that kills her boyfriend, allegedly. I don't think she did it, honestly, when you watch the whole thing. Like, I think she was involved, but I don't, I, I anyway. I don't want to ruin it for anybody that hasn't seen it. My, my wristband's still on. <laughs> you have to keep it on all weekend. Can't take it off, see? But anyway, um, she, uh, they showed her this one point. Apparently, she's like a heavy drinker. And she's like praying to God. And she's like, dear God, dear God, if you, if you bring him back, this is what she says. And I'm like, oh my God, that is, like, that is literally, the, and I'm not saying she is. I don't put that on somebody else. But like, I'm thinking like, those are things, those are deals I used to make with God back in the day when I didn't even really know if I believed in one or not. You know, not that murder was involved or anything like that, but she's like, God, if you bring him back, like she's thinking so irrationally, right? She's like, if you bring him back, I will quit drinking for good. I will do anything. I will quit drinking for good if you bring him back. And then literally like 30 seconds later, she's like, or maybe I'll just have one or two drinks a day. I'll, 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 I'll go to just, and I'm like, oh my, that's literally how I thought, like deal making, right? Like I can remember like my dad and my stepmom or other people, friends of mine confronting me about how bad my drinking was. And I was like, I just can, I either would just be like, you're not gonna be in my life anymore or I just wouldn't talk to those people anymore if they said that stuff, you know? And I just, it just pissed me off so bad because you're trying to take away the one thing I love the most, you know? Which is why I think we go to it's not a problem when we know it's a problem, right? But I can remember like having discussions with my dad where my dad would be like, this is it. Like I'm done with you. Like after this and like leaving, you know? And on the way home being like, okay, like I'm not gonna ever drink again. Well, I'll start it tomorrow. And then tomorrow, well maybe I'll just smoke weed. Or maybe I'll just not like maybe I'll just have drink beer or just have one or two drinks a day and then I'd be like but I can't do that till tomorrow I'll, I'll do that tomorrow I swear God you know I'll do that tomorrow whatever and then I would stop at the liquor store on the way home always you know I think but like, watching 28 days really reminded me like how much of a struggle it was at first in ways that like I don't even remember that it was that much of a struggle you know here I am, 29 years later, 51 years old, dancing in the rain to Tiesto. I mean, that was nothing that you could have ever told me that would be, I mean, if you had shown me a picture of that and been like, this is gonna be your life sober, being ha happily married, being, you know, hanging out in a hotel room all day long with your husband, getting, you know, uh, room service, having so much fun, not even being upset that it's rained out because you got to dance in the rain to Tiesto at one of the best music festivals in the world, you know, and you're sober, I would have been like, there, no, there's no way, you know, and, and I, I just, I, I got done watching the show last night, at the end of 28 days, there's a part where she sees this guy that she went to treatment, and I can remember, like, seeing people that I went to treatment, it's like a sinking ship thing, all this is in my outline, so I'm going to talk about this in this video that I do, um, I actually, I filmed a video today, 
before we started getting ready to go to Ultra. And it was like, well, it's like a drama video, but I addressed some things in there. And uh, I was gonna post it today, and I was like, no, because by the time, it wasn't even done uploading. And I was like, I'm not gonna upload it at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So I was like, I'll just save it for tomorrow, then I don't have to film a drama video for tomorrow. Plus, I'm not gonna film every day while I'm down here, you know? And so, I don't know when I'm gonna do this sober video. Maybe I'll film it and then upload it like the day that we come back or whatever. Um, I don't wanna like rush to make it, but, and I know it won't get a lot of views and I don't really care as long as like one person hears it and is impacted by it because I'm watching the end of this video and it's this part where their counselor, who's Steve Buscemi, says to them in the movie, this like gay guy asks like, when can you like start having sex or having a relationship and they all laugh. They're like in this like lecture. And he goes, well, what I always tell people is, this is like, I mean, people don't talk about this, but this is like a recovery thing that because of that movie, people say this, that it's Steve Buscemi says, what I tell people is get a plant. And if you can keep that plant alive for a year, at the end of that, of that year, get a pet. And then at the end of two years, if the plant is still alive and the pet is still alive, then you can maybe think about getting a relationship. Meaning that you have cared and taken care of two living things that maybe it's now time that you can actually think about being in a relationship because we're not good in relationships, you know, at all. Especially when we first get sober, which is why people suggest to us, don't get in a relationship for your first year of sobriety. You don't have anything to give to anybody, you know? And so she, Sandra Bullock walks into this, this is the very end of the show, the movie. Sandra Bullock walks into this plant um, shop and he's going over to eat, so I'm gonna get off here in a second. She goes over to this plant shop and he's in there and he's crying because he's killed this like spider plant, right? <laughs> and he's like talking to the guy that owns the plant shop. He's like, no, you did something to this plant. He's like, I can't, this, it can't be to this plant. Like I killed this plant. And he turns around and she's standing there and she goes like this and he, and he gives her a hug and she's, he's like, he's got this sad looking dog, you know? And he goes, I killed the plant and I don't even think my dog likes me. It's just such like, and I'm like bawling my eyes out because this is, it is so, that is so sobriety, especially early sobriety, you know? And I think, I'm like crying and I like turned off the movie and I was like sitting out here for a second. I thought, God, you are amazing. Like, thank you. Just thank you for this like amazing life. You know? I have such an amazing life. I'm so grateful to even be alive and to be sober, it's just amazing, you know? I knew what was interesting was, at the festival, like, all these people were all dancing in the rain, you know? Nobody's complaining about it. I don't hear anybody complaining about dancing in the rain, you know? It's like everybody just kind of embraced it. I don't know, maybe that's a lesson. Oh, there's more lightning. Maybe that's an a lesson for me in life that I need to take away, you know? Remember how I said I was gonna do that thing like every day for my, the year I was 52, a lesson I learned? This would be my lesson for today, that when it rains in life during, if life is a music festival and it starts to rain, dance harder, dance faster, dance to the rhythm of the music, whether it's raining or not. Rain will come and go, but the music will go on forever, wow. <laughs> that was cheesy, wasn't it? Oh, but it's true, you know? My mom loved to dance in the rain. I thought of her a little bit tonight. She would have loved it. She loved to wash her hair in the rain and dance in the rain. My mom loved it. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna go eat my dinner with my husband. I'm gonna take a shower, put on my pajamas, and I'm gonna watch a show tonight. So, um, I love you guys so much. And, real short outro, but... Hope you guys are having a magically amazing Friday, a fantastic beginning of your weekend. Don't let anything get you down. Whatever you're going through right now, put one foot in front of the other. I hope you get through it. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. And I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching me while I'm on vacation. I love you and I'll see you in my next vlog, which might be tomorrow or it might not be. <laughs> so I just, it, I, it's, we're gonna take it day by day while I'm on vacation. I love you guys and I'll see you then. Bye. Love ya. Oh, and, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Or what? If nobody else has told you this today, I love you. All right. See you guys uh, tomorrow. My next video. I don't know. I love you. Bye. Love you.